Good evening. This is Friday, October 17th, 18 days until the 2008 presidential election. An election that the Obama campaign today formally, in an official request for a special prosecutor, suggested that the McCain campaign is conspiring to steal with help from the White House and the Department of Justice. Our fifth story tonight, with the election itself at stake, breaking news that Obama is setting the stage for a dramatic reenactment of the battle over Republican corruption of the DOJ to suppress Democratic voting in 2004 and 2006. Only this time, with this Democrat, the battle now being joined before it's too late. It is unfolding by the hour tonight. First two top officials at the Justice Department leaked the fact that the DOJ is seeking evidence that ACORN, a network of community groups, might be involved in a coordinated national scam to register register fake voters. The background. Every election, ACORN uses part-time workers to register new voters. Every election, a handful of workers rip off ACORN by making up voter names. ACORN itself is required by law to submit even the names it knows are fake, and ACORN even flags those names for officials to exclude. And even though none of this voter registration fraud has led to significant voter fraud or fake votes cast, for the last two election cycles, Republicans from the White House down have tried to tighten voting restrictions, which often screen out poor and minority voters, that is, Democrats, by ginning up a handful of registration fraud cases as evidence of widespread fraud in voting itself. That's why several DOJ prosecutors were fired in 2006 for having rejected political pressure to pursue unfounded voting fraud cases. Special Prosecutor Nora Danahe now investigating the Bush administration's use of the DOJ in that effort. And now, less than two years later, this letter from the Obama campaign to the Attorney General Michael Mukasey. Today, quote, I request that Special Prosecutor Danahe's inquiry include a review of any involvement by Justice Department and White House officials in supporting the McCain-Palin campaign and the Republican National Committee's systematic development and dissemination of unsupported spurious allegations of vote fraud. DOJ replied to countdown tonight, quote, we will review the letter. So, could there be any evidence that Senator McCain might be pushing hyperbolic allegations of voting fraud? And of that relationship, we need to know the full extent of Senator Obama's relationship with ACORN, who is now on the verge of maybe perpetrating one of the greatest frauds in voter history in this country, maybe destroying a fabric of democracy. Any evidence, perhaps, that Mr. Mukasey is responding to political pressure? Pressure coming in, say, the last days of the campaign, when even Justice Department guidelines discourage these investigations precisely because of partisan concerns. September 16th, Assistant House Republican Whip Tom Feeney and 38 others write to Mukasey about ACORN. Last Friday, House Republican Whip Roy Blunt and five others write to Mukasey about ACORN. On Tuesday, Republican Senator John Cornyn writes to Mukasey about ACORN. Three Republicans from the battleground state of Wisconsin write to Mukasey about ACORN. Yesterday, two senior DOJ officials revealed the ACORN investigation to the Associated Press. To quote, they spoke on condition of anonymity because DOJ regulations forbid discussing ongoing investigations, particularly so close to an election. Today, this RNC Republican press release, quote, the New Mexico Republican Party say they believe 28 people voted fraudulently in June. The chairman of the New Mexico Republican Party is Alan Way, the same GOP chief who asked Karl Rove in 2005 to fire New Mexico's state U.S. attorney David Iglesias, precisely because Iglesias had refused to toe the line on pursuing bogus voter fraud claims. Rachel Maddow on the politics in a moment. First, we're joined now by the general counsel to the Obama campaign, Bob Bauer, whose letter to Attorney General Mukasey we just quoted. Thank you for your time tonight, sir. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have we got this uh, pretty much right here that you're essentially raising the possibility, asking for a special prosecutor to determine whether the McCain campaign is essentially conspiring with the Republican National Committee and, and in what would be a, probably a pretty crucial illegal part with official government elements at the White House, at the Justice Department, to create this uh, phony appearance of widespread voting fraud that lends itself to crackdowns that wind up only suppressing Democratic votes. You do have it right. You have it exactly right. And I think it's important, Keith, if I could, to put it within the broader context of the kind of negative, unprecedentedly vicious and negative campaign uh, that the McCain-Palin campaign is currently running. Uh, wherever you look, at every level, uh, you see these tactics being used, and now this toxin appears to have entered into the Justice Department not too long uh, after the administration promised to clean up after the U.S. attorney dismissals and the scandal uh, over the U.S. attorney dismissals. 
So what we're seeing here is, I'm afraid to say, evidence that on another level yet again, along with the robocalls, along with the negative ads, along with all of these activities, these viciously negative activities, we now have legal tactics that are being used of a similarly vicious nature, and they threaten to poison the Department of Justice and the impartial administration of the law. We're asking Attorney General Mukasey, who came to the Department of Justice to clean up after the U.S. attorney scandal, to take the action necessary to remove this matter uh, from, frankly, political hands and put them in independent hands. And you pointed out there is a special prosecutor, Nora Danahy, who could easily take this on and make it part of her expanded responsibilities. Can you, Mr. Bauer, connect the dots for me? Explain why and how uh, crackdowns on voting fraud would reduce Democratic votes disproportionately to Republican votes. Well, there's an attempt here at all phases of this campaign uh, to smear, and this is a smear on voters. It's an attempt to discourage people from voting, to drive them away from the polls. And there's a variety of ways that voters are discouraged and voters are subject to these smears. And as I said, you have to see it as all part of a piece. Uh, whether it's the robocalls that even today, by the way, Republican Senator Susan Collins asked the McCain campaign to take down in the state of Maine, or the sleazy legal tactics repudiated today by unanimous Ohio Supreme Court, or the senior Justice Department officials now engage apparently in colluding for partisan political purposes in violation of department policy. At every single one of these levels, you see uh, this behavior taking place. And so I think now with the report of these officials who you point out knew that what they were doing was wrong, told the reporters that what they were doing violated departmental policy, it's time for Mukasey, Attorney General Mukasey, to do what other uh, Republicans of good conscience and independents have done, which is to repudiate this negativity and start to entrusting government to responsible people. And politics, quite frankly, kept out of it. What would the smoking gun be here, sir? Well, what you have is a newspaper article. Mm. By the way, 24 hours, less than 24 hours after John McCain thundered, as your opening uh, showed, about vote fraud threatening the very fabric of our democracy, Right thereafter, almost precisely as you would expect the Republican National Committee and the McCain-Palin campaign to plot it, lo and behold, senior department officials, admitting they were violating departmental policy, announced uh, that an investigation of fraud was underway. This is an astonishing repeat of the kind of toxic intrusion of politics into the lawful administration of justice that we saw during the U.S. attorney scandal. We're seeing a repeat of that. Now, as I said, Attorney General Mukasey came to clean the Department of Justice out, so he has a chance to purge this toxin from the system. And the way that he would do that is to take this uh, to a Special Prosecutor Danahy. She would be in a position to investigate the coordination of this campaign, uh, this uh, illegal campaign, this disreputably negative campaign that's subverting the administration of justice. She'd be in a position to collect information about who those senior departmental justice officials were, and we would begin, uh, hopefully, to have government entrusted to people who would do their responsibility. The general counsel for the Democratic presidential nominee, Bob Bauer. Great, thanks for explaining this for us tonight. Thank you very much. As to the political ramifications, I'm joined now by, as promised, the host of the Rachel Maddow Show, Rachel Maddow. Uh, uh, good evening, Rach. Hi, Keith. All right, the, the headline here is uh, a familiar-sounding Republican possible crime or an unfamiliar-sounding Democratic pushback. The headline here, bold-faced, is finally a Democrat goes beyond lamenting this. Finally, a Democrat goes beyond understanding that this is happening. Finally, there is a Democratic nominee who recognized this was happening early on, said they recognized that it was happening, and had a plan to stop it. Uh, there's nothing unusual about the tactics that are being used here. The, what is unusual is that we've got uh, apparently an aggressive, confident, grounded plan to go after it before Election Day. This is a whole new kind of Democrat, apparently. Yeah, and, and on the other end of this, this is uh, this is sort of textbook definition of why they coined that term McSame, right? I mean, McCain is accused of using, gee whiz, it's exactly the same ta tactics, the suppression tactics that Bush did in 2006 and, and probably in 2004. And good on you for catching that some of the officials involved here are the exact same officials involved in the 2006 scandal that claimed the previous attorney general's job and that have brought us this special prosecutor looking into the U.S. attorney's scandal. I mean, to have the same New Mexico 
officials making the same claims that put people in legal jeopardy for having fired David Iglesias, making those exact same claims now, it ought, it shouldn't even be an alarm. It should be expected. And apparently to the Obama campaign, it was expected because they knew exactly how to push back on this, what to tie it to, and, and, and what their specific legal counterpunch would be. I am impressed um, by the Obama campaign on this like I haven't been with a Democratic politician in a long time. And there was an actual result in uh, the, the saga of voter suppression uh, today. The Supreme Court throwing out the ruling by the Republican judge in Ohio that it had uh, thrown out or thrown rather 200,000 new voter registrations in that state into doubt. How important was that Supreme Court ruling, do you think? Well, I've got the Ohio Secretary of State, Jennifer Brenner, joining me in the first half hour of the show coming up right after you. So I hope to hear directly from her how important this is. I know that already that she believes, I know from our pre-interview with her, that she believes that this is a major victory uh, for Ohio voters. I hope to get more of a sense from her when I talk to her. And I think it's the first television interview she's done since the Supreme Court ruling. I hope to get more of a sense from her whether she thinks there really is a war on in Ohio this year for the sanctity of the vote. If you can't beat them at the polls, you beat them away from the polls.